The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advise professionals, stay on top of tech trends, and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. Wealth is about more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. NetWealth is supporting financial literacy and education in primary schools through Banker, a fun, interactive platform for children to learn about money. So far, we have sponsored and given over 100,000 children in Australia free access and want to reach even more. Discover a world of community at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. To give listeners of the Advice Tech Podcast another avenue to solve technology problems that matter most and efficiently evaluate the landscape of advice tech providers, Ensemble has launched an advice tech space on its platform. If you want to know how your advice peers are solving their tech challenges, big and small, it's the place to go. Head to the Ensemble platform or use the link in the show notes to join today. Today we're talking digital advice platforms with George Harris, CEO and co-founder at Money GPS. So George positions Money GPS as your new best friend, as they can engage all of the clients you can't afford to look after, as well as the next generation that are demanding a modern advice solution. It's about providing simple and single topic advice to those that really need it and have been priced out. And the Money GPS platform makes it incredibly easy to bolt this onto your business, as well as add your own services and engage clients when it exactly suits them. Given the money GPS AFSL is actually providing the advice, the platform isn't limited to financial advisors. So all of a sudden, you've got accountants and employers through their employee wellness offerings indirectly entering advice, as well as big super funds and institutions either on their way back in or going live with their own digital offering. So what became clear to me during this chat is that a digital advice platform is quickly becoming the standard in advice and not something that's going to enable you to stand out for much longer. As George quite rightly points out, that if you're not delivering a digital solution to your clients in any way, shape or form, someone else will. I started by asking George what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. The oldest piece, Patrick, is a calculator, which I bought in 1997. And it's, the, it's a trusty piece of equipment that I take with me everywhere. I use it all the time. Right? Better than my phone calculator, right? I love it. It's amazing and something that we definitely take for granted and I guess we're starting to take it for granted now in terms of AI, but is there maybe one or two ways that you're using AI either personally or in your work life? Look, um, I tried using um, uh, ChatGPT when it first came out. I got my Mm -hmm. wife to ask ask it, what's the recipe for um, moussaka because we've got a Greek Greek background and she said, no, doesn't know what it's talking about. (laughs) So, <laughs> so, so that didn't work out too well. But um, within the within the business, look, uh, everything is rule. You know, we work in an industry which is rules based. So our underlying digital technology is all run by algorithms and the calculate calculation engine, which are rules based. So we don't technically use AI in our process. We are looking at you know machine learning and um, what do you call it? Optimal, you know. Uh, recognition learning, for looking at documents, but that's sort of next stage for some of the new SOI, SOIs. But currently, no AI, no. No, it makes it makes a lot of sense to build a, a product yep. or platform that can stand on its own two feet and isn't prone yeah. to hallucinations or no, no, unexplained that's right. outputs. Yeah. And yeah, the Musica example that seems very very Googleable. <laughs> not sure, I'm not sure if you asked it now, it might be able to fix well, it. I'm sure. Maybe different regions have different views. Yeah, exactly. I thought I'd test it with, with the AI. Very importantly, it you know it's evolving, it's learning. We've got to be totally guaranteed that the, the advice we we're giving is based upon the requirements of an AFSL, and that's the way we do it. 
fully yep. rules based. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. So I guess before we jump into all things money, GPS, George, can you take yep. us through your origin story? So what's your professional background and what led you to actually co-found yeah. the business? Yeah. Um, I've been in financial services this year, which is now 36 years. I started with the Seal Corp Group back in the late 80s. Seal Corp established Securitor and Asgard. So I was there for the very first Asgard presentation with 16 people in the room thinking, what is this thing? It was I always remember that day. Um, but but mostly it's running AFSL, so Securitor, Retire Invest, uh, ANZ Private Bank's business, ran part of Perpetual's business for a while. It's really uh, engaging with the, 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 the dealer group, growing it or fixing it, as was the case with the Retire Invest when I came in it after it was given an enforceable undertaking. So it's those areas that I've been mostly involved in. I stepped out of corporate life um, about 12 years ago and started my own business, a small a boutique AFSL that had 47 accounting practices working with it, 35 accountant, accounting firms licensed to me for SMSF purposes. That was a challenge. It was like hurting blind kittens because the guy's trying to do the right thing, but they're thinking, why do we have to go through this whole rigmarole to, to do something we've already been doing? And I expl- you, know, you, you, you explain to them, the requirements that ASIC put out, and they were very good. Most of them were licensed. It's a pity that the ASIC requirements sort of fell apart in that SMSF licensing area. But um, I sold that business, and then around six years ago, um, caught up with some people I worked with post Silcorp Group when we started a business called Snowball Financial in 1998, and we received a grant from the government to build an algorithm in the late 1990s to deliver online financial planning, but the tech wasn't good enough, so we pivoted the business. Uh, but now the tech is good enough, so we thought we'd give it a go, and that's really what led me to be a co-founder of Money GPS, and that is now just over five years ago. It was five years in May, so it's uh, it's been an interesting ride. Yeah, actually. goodness me! <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I managed to um, sneak in the Asgard origin story there too. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well. You know, as I said, the very first presentation, there were about 16 people in the room thinking, this is amazing, and then going out to everybody having a chat about it. Um, and then I, I, I left, worked for Lend Lease, and came back. Some say I was on, um, I was a spy. For, you know, I'm going to learn a few things and come back <laughs> undercover. Uh, but we set up the Yazgat corporate division, which became, you know, reasonably successful. Um, so I, I, I learned a lot about uh, distribution, advice businesses, employee benefits, corporate super, and that's sort of all come together with Money GPS because we are in a number of different channels. So that experience is finally starting to pay off, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. awesome. Yeah. And yeah. you mentioned that the tech wasn't there in the late 1990s no. and it's there now. Yeah. I mean, why would you say you've taken that plunge to establish Money GPS? I guess what is it and what's the objective of the business? Good, good question. Look, we, we always thought the tech, could be used to improve the efficiencies in, in a financial planning business. And that was one of the reasons we started Snowball. It just didn't quite come off because of the, the, the tech at that point. But in this case, what we realized was that the tech was improving so quickly that there was a gap in the marketplace where, um, you know, reducing number of advisors, demand on advisors was increasing uh, by people that could afford advice, but then you've got this whole cohort of people 80, 90% of the population maybe. Um, actually, maybe not that much because the, the the first 20% probably don't need it at all. Very, very basic. It may be 60 or 70% of the population need it, need advice, personal advice, but they simply can't afford it. And we thought given the tech is uh, improving all the time and a number of organizations were springing up globally doing lots of things with the tech, obviously, that we thought, well, let's, let's give it a go. So that's why the business was started to – to build the technology or to create the platform that allowed people to engage with a personal advice, but um, fully client-led. So this is our this is one of our key differences where we we've set up the platform so an individual can jump on to the Money GPS, complete a fact find, and then the the algorithm and the calculation engine will determine which advice topics are in their best interest to access and which topics they should not have access to. So we shut the door on those topics that are not in their best interest to access. And that took probably three and a bit years to work out how to do it. It was, you know, we've, we've been 
you know, heads down and the proverbial up for quite some time. We've been under the radar for a while, but it took us quite a while to, d- to actually um, develop our own internal code, if you like, on how to build a digital SOA. And we're very, very good at building product now, very good at building product. So we launched in 2003, sort of late 2003. We extended the tech to the SMSF side as we sort of chatted before. So we can we can digitally analyze an SMSF in, in less than a minute, integrated with BGL and about to integrate with class. Um, I think by the time this goes to air, we, that integration will have happened. But we did that because when I was working with the accounting practices, we you know, we, we worked with the accountants. And we thought the only way we could really engage with them is to analyze their client base. So we weren't data analysts, but we knew that there was a lot of information in the database and the accountants, by the very nature of their work, very good at compliance, looking after their clients. But I, I feel for them because they just don't have the time to look behind the numbers. Yeah. So we'd analyze the SMSFs and say, did, did you know you had $300 million of the property and $180 million of the LRBAs and 80% don't have insurance? And No. Well, they don't or they do. And, and these are the things we can do to help you. So we extended the capability of the tech. And now the accountant's GPS is up and running, but it's really the managed GPS platform that we've that we're building on quite substantially, and operating in a number of different channels, but using the same operating platform. That's that's one of the objectives going forward to continue to do that. And those channels are accounting, uh, financial advice, and employers. So employers are now sort of um, being engaged by us um, uh, to deliver super you know, advice generally, but also financial wellness, well-being, and that's the way the platform has been set up. It's advice and well-being because, you know, just before COVID, actually, Patrick, we held a number of focus groups with people. Um, I was actually behind that uh, mirrored wall, as you see sometimes, and it was very frustrating. It was like, oh, no, <laughs> he didn't ask the question the right way. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, but the, the feedback was phenomenal because, you know, obviously one of the questions was, this is before COVID, would you jump online and have a meeting? Well, we all know the answer to that one, right? Yeah. The answer is, would you actually see someone face-to-face these days? <laughs> that's the, I think that's the question more than anything. Um, the feedback was very clear that everybody knew they needed advice. Everyone had stories about others who had tried advice, hadn't worked out, paid too much money, know they needed it, didn't know, to, didn't know who to go to, would really like to go to an advisor if their accountant referred them or vice versa, but they just wouldn't mind having a go at a particular price point as a starting point because they all knew they needed it. That was the big message, right? And whether they get the advice standing around a barbecue or whatever, they know they they need to get it from somewhere professional and reliable because it's the financial future at stake. And and we had three different categories of clients. Um, Millennials, which was interesting because they were all go, 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 online, online. Yeah. Um, middle-aged people, and then pre-retirees who had done a lot of the groundwork, and they questioned whether the digital capability of Matter GPS would have, you know, could ever provide pre-retirement retirement income advice, and, and, and we can. So, we, you know, we've designed pre-retirement um, reports and are now just finalizing some retirement income SOAs to bring to the marketplace. Yeah. Awesome. No, thank you for that very comprehensive overview. And, yeah, just something you mentioned a couple of minutes ago now is the on the accounting side of things where you're so right in terms of very, very focused on being in the file and on the numbers of that particular entity or particular client and just don't have the time or the know-how to zoom out and just see that at a high level. No, no, look, I, I feel for them. I, I know, you know, I've got a number of relatives, number of cousins who are accountants and, and they're doing the same thing. They just get caught up. They're, they're doing the right thing. Um, a number of firms don't do that. They do, you know, the, the partners do step back. It's a different mindset, I think. Um, but if they could step back a little bit more, then they're, they're, well, I believe their practice would flourish. So we, we've created a full turnkey operation or, pro- or proposition, I should say, for an accountant or an advisor or an employer, which is really the same in every sense. It, there are some nuances to each channel, which we obviously introduce, but we do all the heavy lifting because I learned that unless you do that, particularly for accounting firms, they don't have the time. Then they're always busy, you know. Um, then it never happens. So that's that's what we've done. Yep. Yep. And it needs to be guided. So I guess totally. Yep. So Money GPS, you're a, you're a digital advice provider and enabler. Do you mind providing us with an understanding of what digital advice actually is, and maybe what the difference is between robo advice and what you offer? Sure. Sure. 
Um, let, let me just first start with Robo. So, you know, sometimes you walk into a, a presentation and people will make the comment, oh, you're talking to us about Robo. No, no. Robo is this. Someone completes a fact find, sorry, a risk profile. They complete a risk profile. And based upon the client's risk profile, the outcomes of that um, that questionnaire, the provider will put them into a model portfolio. That's it. So all it is is investment advice, clear and simple. Digital advice that we provide has a number of characteristics. It is personal advice. So imagine a financial plan and sitting with a client, filling out the questionnaire, providing a comprehensive plan. We do that to a, to a degree. It's everything is is uh, is digital in terms of the activities we undertake. The AFSL delivers the advice, not an individual AR. We have no ARs in our business, so the AFSL delivers the advice. Um, it could either be one hundred percent digital, or we have what's called a hybrid offer, where an individual client can speak to a human, a qualified person. Now, in our case, we have ex financial planners in our business that only provide general advice. So you as a client, Patrick, can complete the questionnaire, receive an SOA, and have a, have a meeting, an online meeting with a, we call them GPS coaches, that provide general advice. They, they validate your responses, answer, answer your questions, and help you to the next stage of either implementation or starting a new SOA or just having a, a conversation about your circumstances. They will, because the rest of ex-advisors drill down where they think they need to, to identify possibility that, hey, you may need comprehensive, right? If that's the case, because all the meetings are recorded for compliance, they will triage you to the respective financial advisor that we're working with, refund you the SOA fee, and give you a copy of the, of the meeting. So we we cover um, all advice topics, or um, the growing number of advice topics, I should say, in super insurance, um, sorry, super investment, retirement, and soon to be insurance. We cover strategy recommendations and product recommendations. I think that's really important. We we don't. We don't t- take the horse to water, so to speak, and then just leave them there. We 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 give them a solution, and that's what people are looking for. Th- there's no point in providing an SOA if there's no product recommendation to give them that solution, right? Or providing an educational flyer, it doesn't get them anywhere. And then we um, we implement whether that's with a GPS coach or digitally. We're trying to create the SOAs and, and enhance the tech so there's more digital implementation. Now we thought that would be fantastic. But it turns out that people get to that implementation stage and they'll make a, you know, I'll organize a meeting with a GPS coach. And I'll actually call people who are, you know, uh, well paid, digitally savvy, had a chat to them, and, you know, why are you using this? Because you only charge $180 and I don't want to pay for a $4,500 plan. I just want one topic. So it's a single topic. But in any case, I don't need comprehensive advice. And in one case, I remember. I said to the person, well, you're fine. It's an investment SOA. You can digitally implement. Away you go. No, I want to speak to a GPS coach. So but you can do this really simply. Why, why won't you do that? Well, he said, I, I don't want to stuff it up. This is new territory for me. Even though I'm digitally savvy, playing or not playing, but, but dealing with my own assets, investing this way is new. I'd rather engage with someone who's knowledgeable, who can take me to that next step. And I'm happy to pay the 50 bucks for 30 minutes or $100 for the hour, right? It's, it's no skin off my nose. So the hybrid option with a GPS coach is extremely important. I, look, I know you can use avatars for this stuff where you can go through an SOA and maybe use an avatar or some form of AI, but the ability to engage with a human should never be underestimated um, as part of the digital advice process. That's that's a really, really interesting insight George like in terms of flipping the script on where the value is in terms of spend all this time and money trying to sell this SOA for thousands of dollars but really they want to pay for the actual human to help me implement it yeah yeah That's it's, um, and and we don't look we don't charge a lot of money for implementation or the SOAs right it's it's they're all affordable but what it does do it allows the person to to I, I guess gain that extra little bit of confidence we know that they go back onto the platform. We know that they look at the education modules. You know, we, we're very good at building product, but what we, we've also recognized is, and the algorithm has been designed this way, is that the algorithm will identify a whole bunch of other services that the client should access to help them improve their financial position, not just that SOA topic. So 
it could be that the report that comes out, our money checkup or our retirement checkup says, identifies, hey, Patrick, you should look at reviewing your mortgage because your rate's no good and your you know, term's no good. You might have the ability to invest in a, in a direct property because of the the, um, the calculators that we build into the algorithms. We do a review of your insurances, estate planning. So there's all these other services that we've got on the platform that the client can avail themselves of. Um, and because not everybody needs an SOA every day of the week, they might need one now and maybe in three months' time or six months' time, but hey, I've just had a child, I need to look at my insurance and my will. And you know what? My mortgage doesn't look great. My, my interest rate on my mortgage, maybe I could do better. So there are other things that help improve someone's position and their financial well-being and wellness. And and we and we we actually um, identify or rate their financial well-being um, in our reports, and we can track their improvement as they go through the platform and complete other advice documents and take up different services. Yeah, okay. No, that makes a lot of sense and that's really insightful as well to be able to actually track the positive benefit that you're having on them using the platform and basically the value that they're getting. So at least, the very least at a B2B level, you've got something for everyone. So whether that's retail advice practices, accounting firms, employers, as you mentioned, so employee wellness offering and the big end of town. So I'm thinking obviously your licensees and your super funds. and. Just on the super fund um, or big institution side of things, saw this morning actually that so ASIC via their money smart channel has, has just urged super funds to better engage with their millennial members and to improve services, <laughs> transparency and access to information with their research finding that about half of the millennials they surveyed aren't knowledgeable when it comes to maximizing their super. So my question is with all of those um, sort of B2B yeah. offerings. What's the overall strategy in in offering your digital IP, like your platform, to the yeah. market as a whole? So, if I, if I talk about the retail channel first, with accountants, advisors, and employers, you know, we use the same operating platform across each of those channels. The, the platform that we deliver is a white label version that everybody gets. It's the same. Uh, the the customization can be in a number of different ways, which which will lead me into the super fun discussion point. So. If you can just bear with me. So we can white label the platform for any of the retail um, subscribing firms. We can also integrate products and services that the advisor has onto the platform and onto our report so we can customize. And we can allow them to um, add a margin to the SOAs up to a point. Yeah, they've got to be affordable. So we can offer some customization. Now that extends itself to the to the super funds and the institutions. The, the the super funds, and we've been talking to a lot of them for for a couple of years now, and it's only been since last December when Stephen Jones came out on the seventh and said, "Hey, we're accepting most of the quality advice recommendations, and by the way, you should use digital advice because it'll make um, delivering advice more accessible and affordable to your members." So our, our world changed on that on that day, to be to be honest. The super funds have a challenge in what I believe, and this is after discussions with quite a few of them, retaining members, mm-hmm. engagement levels with members. And I know they spend a lot of money and a lot of effort trying to do the right thing in engaging and educating. It's There's this thing called apathy that people have. You know, you see it occasionally, you think, why don't you do that? It's so simple. But hey, you know, at 67 or whatever it's going to be when I retire, it's a long time away. So I believe that digital enablement is the trick, gamifying what we're doing, and we're doing that with some of our work, but also making it pertinent to the millennial because, sure, I can, you know, I can promote putting more money into super, but what about the first home super saver scheme? You know, we, we, we're building an SOA for that, mm-hmm. and that's a, that's a monty for young people to, to help them you know, put a deposit on their first home. So it's creating applicable SOAs or relevant SOAs to the different segments in the marketplace. And hence, this sort of growing suite of SOAs that I think, well, I know that we are and, and, and I hope the other digital providers are also producing because one size doesn't fit all. And, and whilst the money checkup is designed, you know, a factual report or, or digital fact find is designed for people up to 45 to maybe a little bit older, that's a big range from 25 to 45, right? So you've got to be very specific about the types of products, and I call the SOAs, you know, digital products that you can deliver to the different um, demographics to make it, you know, engaging but also relevant for them. 
So super funds are a, are a challenge because you know, they've got to engage their members, retain their members, educate them, and now they also have to deliver retirement income solutions, right? Government and ASIC um, are putting pressure on the super fund trustees to deliver these retirement income solutions. We've all read the articles, particularly the last few in, in the, la- the last few weeks with ASIC and APRA coming out and saying, you've got to do more, super fund trustees. I, I think it's a challenge for the trustees to get their head around advice because a lot of them have never had to do it before. And, and you know, with all due respect, it's, it's not an easy area to understand, to build your knowledge up on a, you know, very quickly. Because to me, advice is all about risk management as a starting point. And I think if they took the time and more are taking the time to speak to the digital providers to look at what we're doing or to look at advice generally, they'd feel a little bit more comfortable in engaging an advice option, whether it's, you know, human to human or digital or a combination of both. And that's why I think, you know, the, I saw, I read the ASIC article, you know, with some of the influences that were in there as well, which was an interesting group of people. Yeah. Um, and I think um, digital can play a huge role in educating as well as delivering the advice. I think it's that education piece which is important, particularly for the younger ones, because they just don't get it. You know, so, well, that superannuation funds they grew, didn't perform well. Well, no. Your investment choice might not have performed well because you mightn't be in the right investment choice, but the fund overall is structured well and, and so on. Um, so yeah, look, it's it, yeah, it's a, it's a challenge for everybody, I think. I'm with you, and I think yeah, just on the apathy side, apathy side of things, I think once you put like a dollar value, obviously it's, it's affordable, but once you put a dollar value on that, um, I guess we're talking single topic SOAs, it instantly becomes yeah. more valuable. Whereas it, if it you've does. got you know, advice is lumped in with my super fund and I'm paying for all these line item transparent yep. fees, it's hard to connect the dots and go, do I value this service that just comes out of the box? Agreed. And, you know, we our advice fees in a retail sense range from $90 to $180. And, and we can reduce those even further if, if we yep. need to. With a super fund, it's a slightly different scenario because, you know, we, we license the technology. So it's up to them it's up to the yeah. super fund trustees and the execs to determine what they charge. They can give it away, and that's the way I think it should be. They're, they're paying a lot of money for the licensing of the tech because they can customize it, and they're in a position where they can spread the cost of the cost across all of the members now. So yeah. that's a that's a huge plus. So, you know, I just uh, encourage them to keep going and have a closer look at all the digital providers, and you know. Make yep. up their mind. <laughs> Don't get there. Don't, Don't get there. So, how would you say, George, it actually helps financial advisors today? Yeah. So, firstly, yep. maybe working with individual clients themselves and then the actual impact that it will have on their businesses. Yeah, look, um, it, it's a good question because when we first started talking to financial advisors, you know, the, the arms were folded. They thought we were competition, but really, I'd always say, we're your new best friend. Um, you know, we can engage all of the clients you can't afford to look after, people that can't afford your services anymore, um, millennials, children of high net worth who, you know, you, you, you need to look after. You, you're probably not making any money on it, but you need to look after those people, all the people. These are your high net worth clients or some of them for their future. And now we can provide a scalable solution. And what that means is if you've got 50, 100, 1,000, and some of the groups we deal with have thousands of clients who they can't get to, we can engage those people very quickly, very economically under your brand. Money GPS is delivering the advice, but everything is white labeled under your brand. That's the platform. And you can incorporate your products and services onto the platform so that you're generating business by stealth. And what that means is that if you know, it's not just advice, uh, formal personal advice people buy, but insurances and um, estate planning and lending and finance and you know other things that you might have, other services that you have in your practice that we can incorporate and customize on the platform. So we can really provide a complete white label service, very cost effectively, good return on investment, and also do the marketing. You don't have to worry about it if you're an advisor. We do it all, just like we do for the accountant or the employer. And the, the other side to that is that um, we promote your brand, uh, we identify clients that where we triage out to your comprehensive advice services straight away. You know, we have a st- certain criteria that when people start the digital process, if they're not suitable, they're triaged out. Just like 
you know, not everybody should complete an online will. For a lot of people, it's the bespoke service. And if you're dealing with referral partners or, or employers, then I would encourage any, anyone to have a look at this because we can engage those referral partners and employers and embed your white label proposition into their business or practice. And that's, a, that's an extension of your business. Right. Whether whether they're based in if you're based in Melbourne, whether they're based in Melbourne, Sydney, or Broome, we can do that for the for the um, for the practice and the accounting firm or employer. So the scalability is yeah. significant because we do it very very cost effectively, and it doesn't take long. It just yeah, you're just adding another business line overnight or in days. It's amazing. T- totally. I mean, one one of our um, Arthur Callis who um, runs Spark, Spark Financial Group. Um, is a client of ours. So Spark are one of the national AFSLs we work with. He calls us the digital, the other advisor, the digital right. advisor that you'd pick up very, very cost effectively as opposed to acquiring a, a you know a well seasoned professional advisor into the practice. Yeah. <laughs> so the ROI on in, on the investment is is pretty good. Yeah. Awesome. No, that's yeah. that's great, and I think what you mentioned before too around the the children of high net worth clients, or just the you know, everyone's been banging on about it for years. The next generation yeah. are coming, inheritances, yeah. totally. um, all that sort of thing. It's just it's such a great value add for everyone, and especially I would say the actual high net worth client or the client themselves to know yep. that their children's their financial um, future is secured. Oh, totally. I mean, you know, the this intergenerational wealth transfer has been going on for you know ever in a day, but this is the biggest pot of gold at the end of the rainbow because of the baby boomers. You know, they're retiring, they build up their wealth, they've done a great job, the markets have been good. Now it's a, now it's the time to transition it to their to their children or to their estates. And for advisors, you need to engage those kids. Right? You don't want to lose the family. That's the last thing you want to do. And the way to engage with kids is through digital means. Yes, face to face, but you need to have the digital tools to do that. I know with my own daughter, before she visits any professional, she'll go online, check them out, check out what the topics are that she needs to be comfortable with. I mean, it really is painful sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm totally with you. And my understanding is that you actually launched that white label offering with participating practices last year, so 2023. Yes. Can you maybe take us through the progress yeah. that the business has made since then? We, um, That's right. We launched uh, very late. Q3, early Q4 last year, because we'd just really been testing for a couple of years and building for you know, three odd years. And we have a, uh, we've got accounting firms and advisory businesses and national AFSLs now using the service, operational, we're generating revenue, they're using the SOAs. Um, and they're about to go into um, a big promo with um, a global business that has a number of, prof- a number of employer clients that they're introducing us to. Uh, so to date, we have, I think, I don't know, 30 odd practices across the board, early days, but, you know, we're launching with one group with, uh, uh, well, I'll tell you because, uh, the launch is next week and this will be on the, this podcast we're going out post that launch. So we're launching with the, um, with IFPA, the Institute of Financial Professionals Australia. They have three and a half thousand accounting firm members that's being launched. Uh, that was launched on the 10th of September. We're launching with the global business who I can't name because um, media release is not ready yet. Yep. And we've, we've just finished four months of due diligence, which was an interesting exercise. Uh, they have three and a half thousand employers in this country and they've chosen us as their digital advice partner, which is quite exciting. And uh, building on the success we've had with the AFSLs all the time. So early days, but there's a build up now of activity and people getting ready to onboard. And we have onboarding specialists that p- take people through the process. Um, it takes about an hour and a half to onboard. That's it. Congratulations. That is that is huge. And I think what you're highlighting there, George, is like practices that aren't thinking about this or using something like this, it's quickly becoming the standard. Like it's actually not something to no, stand out anymore. That's right. It's mainstream. So it's, how quickly has it changed? Oh, my goodness. This, this is mainstream. And, and I mean, the next – the next sort of dimension to this is the super funds, the super funds and the institution and the insurers. Right, that's 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 another one to put on the list. And I think with, with everything going on at the moment, the the advisors should be looking at this to future proof their business, because there'll be competition from accounting firms who'll use digital services. There'll be competition from brokers. 
uh, there'll be competition certainly from super funds. So, you know, if, if you're not delivering a digital solution to your clients in any, any way, shape or form, the other people, other groups will. And you need to deliver something in, in form of advice capability digitally, whether it's, a, you know, a, at a sort of certain level, um, just to remain relevant because digital is now here to stay. It is mainstream and it's only going to get um, more hectic because of the tech. The tech is improving all the time and the ability for digital providers to develop new products and services because they're getting really good at building product is also growing very quickly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I think it, it feels like if everyone's using the similar rails, it's, there's going to be more demand on you to customize the heck out of the, everyone's individual offering, oh, especially that, as you mentioned with good. the services too. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. Um, or uh, statements of work is, for you signed. This, this is it's, – it's quite exciting. Um, having run traditional businesses now to run the, to the two fintechs, but also the global opportunities because our, our – um, the technology here – uh, used to deliver advice by us and the other providers would be um, ahead of overseas organizations simply because our markets are more advanced. They're more complicated. So we've got to design the tech to cater for the you know the complicating aspects of the market. So when we go to places like Ireland or the UK, you know we've got to simplify the product yeah. before we take it to market, which is a nice thing to do because really the tech, if it works here, it can work anywhere. Yeah, I'm with you. And as you sort of alluded to it before, and you've mentioned through basically any man and his dog can can um, white label this this platform. Obviously, I'm extrapolating, but my understanding is you're actually the the RM or the responsible manager of yes. the AFSL behind Money yes. GPS. So yes. that I assume, well, that is a real <laughs> testament to the confidence that you must have in the platform and the advice yes. that it's actually generating and providing. Do you think that yes. gives confidence to practices that take it on? Oh uh, well, we're, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. You know, we 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 have one. We actually have two AFSLs. We have the Money GPS AFSL, which provides advice uh, to clients of accountants, advisors, and employers. Um, we, we are Patrick about to put on a second RM because it's 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 soon to be. A, well, I think it is an ASIC requirement. You've got to have a minimum yeah. of two, R, two RMs. <laughs> so, I found a buddy of mine who's a good RM. He's coming on. Um, He's got a good investment background, so we, you know, we, we're looking to a few different things on the money GPS AFSL. But we have a second AFSL where I am the only RM at the moment. He will eventually come onto that. So there, there are two licenses, and the second license is for institutions who want to license our technology, but would would prefer us to also deliver the advice. So if it's a super right. fund or a bank that says, "Hey, we like this." We'll license it. We'll make the changes. We'll customize it, but we don't want to deliver the advice. We want you to do that. And sure, we can do that. Right? We're quite confident to do that. Quite confident. Okay. And, and I don't want to go to jail, so we're very, no, very particular was, about the advice. Yeah, the algorithm. <laughs> see the success from the sidelines, but yeah. I think is it my understanding correct as well? You can BYO AFSL too, or is that? Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. So we, we've had surprisingly a number of boutiques come to us and, you know, like what we're doing on the white label side and, and they ask us, well, can we license the tech? And my comeback is, why? I'm, I'm carrying the can on the wrist. Yeah. Why would you want to do that? Well, because we want to show or demonstrate to the clients that we are delivering all aspects of the advice solution, not just comprehensive. And I, and I get that, right? I get that. What, what we can do, we can do that. And so if someone wants to license the technology, at the white label level with no change in the advice rules because that would mean changes in the algorithm, which is which is expensive and time-consuming. Yep. So no changes in the advice rules, assumptions and so on, then um, that's, an, that's an easy thing to do. It's not a cheap thing to do, but it's not expensive. Right? If you're taking a long-term view, it is doable. It's viable financially. Um, the, the other option is that we have been give, given legal advice, which to be honest, surprised me a little bit, that... Uh, advisory businesses and accounting firms and employers, if they want to, can put their brand on the SOAs. As long as we, we're identified as the AFSL delivering the advice, then they can put a, their brand and colors on, on the front of the SOA. They yeah, can certainly do that on the factual reports, no problem. But for the advice documents, they can do that as well. Yeah. yeah. So we do have various levels of customization and licensing that people can take up. Yeah, okay. No, that's really insightful. And I guess um, you've spoken about this in sort of great detail so far, but would you say there's any other key benefits for both maybe advisors and their clients both being on the platform? I just think that it helps 
engage the clients more productively yep. and you have a better chance of retaining the client and having a longer term relationship with the client and attracting more clients like that. Um, I just think it's digital will help you personalize, I think, or improve the, the relationships uh, uh, that you have with clients and, and referral partners because everybody wins. Yeah. Everybody wins. Definitely. Um, yeah. And, you know, now we're both on the platform as in the practice and the, the clients. Do you mind sort of taking through the approach you've taken to cybersecurity? Sure. Sure. We, we were asked that uh, every now and then. So, um, annually, we'll have the platform uh, tested by cybersecurity experts, professional hackers, as I call them. Um, so, they'll come in um, and try and break the platform. So, they do a lot of what we call penetration testing. Um, and uh, we're, we're having one starting, I think, uh, end of September for this year. So, we do that annually. We, we choose a different one every year. Yeah. So, we don't have the same one. And the other thing is that um, from a security point of view, uh, we work with um, AWS or Amazon, and all of the data is stored with Amazon servers both in Sydney, and if that breaks down, there's an alternate server. All of the information is retained in Australia. Um, all of the data that's um, that we receive, if it's being um, transitioned to one product or to the other or back to Amazon, everything's encrypted um, in transit and at, uh, and at rest. Um, uh, we've got full security systems with Amazon, and really, I, I don't think we could do much better. Everything's in the cloud. We don't, we don't use spreadsheets. You know, yeah. we don't send CSV files, things like that. We hate spreadsheets. <laughs> you know, so as much as we can, we are secure because that's the lifeblood of our business, right? We don't retain a lot of information that we're not supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, we are introducing open banking and integrations with Xplan and um, Zero, um, and that's just to improve the quality of data. Um, but we don't need to retain the data if the client doesn't want us to. So all of that's yep. you know um, brought up up front with the client. No, very comprehensive and very comforting. Thank you, George. And I guess you mentioned there those integrations coming up there. I assume that'll be very yep. comforting for I'm thinking X plan for financial planning practices to be able to essentially bolt that on to their offering yep. and not have to worry about double, triple entry yeah. or even and, and, yeah. You know, we we the, the reason for that is is you know a um, getting better quality of data into the system, into the fact phone, be pre-populating fact phone so that the client is not taking 10 to 15 minutes to complete it, but, you know, five minutes, yeah. um, particularly with open banking. And then from a financial point of view, I know that x has the data, but from an accountant's perspective, Zero will then have more of the tax-related financial data that we can use onto the platform. With open banking, uh, we'll be categorizing the expense and income data before, before it comes in. And that will also give us the ability to, um, I guess, use data analysts to review and analyze the client situation, the data, so we can have more meaningful conversations with the client going forward. So it's more personalized, I, I guess, with John yeah, too. Yeah. And I guess a, a big part of why or how you've been able to get that cost down to so low is because the client's actually at this stage entering the, in their information. It's not the advisor or the person no, with the high hourly no, rate spending right. all that time confirming no. information yeah. and even preparing those, it manually too. Even the, exactly right. Even though some advisors want to do that. Yep. And I was like, why? <laughs> Just to go, you know, spend your time, you, you know, the value that you deliver to complex situations and to high net worth clients or pre-retirees, let us engage with those clients where it's not the use of your time productively. Um, sure, your client service people can help to do that, you know, particularly if you've got a lot of, say, insurance-only clients and want to help them with the process. But really, it, it gets to the point where you must get – sorry, you must get to the point where you trust the tech. Yep. And because we're doing it all the time, because we built it, we know what it's like, the tech will do its job and eventually – Everyone will benefit, but you just need to trust the tech because the tech will deliver the solutions everybody needs. Definitely. And sort of along those lines of trusting the process, have you got any sort of thoughts, George, on maybe the current progress of what's now called the uh, DBFO or defining better financial outcomes and maybe the government's overall approach to it? Well, I think the approach should be a lot quicker. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, If I can can just add that first point, look – 7th of December was a great day because, you know, Stephen Jones said we're taking up most of the quality of advice recommendation. I thought, it's terrific. It's great. Um, And the the note about digital just made made my Christmas. But 
there are a lot of organizations, super funds, banks, institutions, and advisory businesses waiting for the government to define the outcomes for change too. And I would hope, I would encourage them to do that sooner rather than later because a lot of people need assistance and things are things are stalling in some areas when they shouldn't need to stall. And I know there's lots of other things to do, but there's lots of people working in government that can do this type of stuff as well, right? Um, I just encourage them to progress it and, and not be put, not put everybody in a position where it stalls so much that it delays decisions being made and that just hampers everybody. Yeah. You can't do business that way and people are looking for solutions and they've got the tools, they've got the ability to make the call so we can deliver solutions. Um, I would just encourage them, as I said, to do that. And, and that's why we set up the, the Association for Digital Providers, which is now under a, 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 um, FSC. Right. Yeah, so that's looking after um, the type of work we're doing. No, and it's, it makes a lot of sense and it's exciting that you're able to achieve what you have been able to achieve with the current regulatory landscape. Like anything must be possible once those um, yeah. are yeah. repealed. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's been an interesting experience, Patrick. Um, you know, first couple of years is what are we going to do? <laughs> How are we going to do this? But once the code was broken, it was it's quite exciting developing the tech, and always talking about well, why not? Why can't we do that? Or why can't we do that now with the tech we can and using and using various AI add-ons. Yep. So we we are looking at AI, but the underlying advice rules will be from the algorithm. It won't be from the AI. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, just speaking on that, is there anything else that's maybe got you excited about the future of money GPS or, or what's on the roadmap that we haven't already discussed? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited about two things in particular. One is the ability for the business to transfer its technology in to overseas jurisdictions. And, you know, we're not going to go crazy with that. Australia is our main market, but there are opportunities in the UK and Ireland that we've explored. So that's, that's exciting. Um, we've just got to tread warily, uh, slowly. Um, to make sure that that's right for us, but the but the other thing is the ideas that we have in delivering not a doc, an SOA which is not document based, which is yep. also not um, uh, a video based, but it's something more interactive. Yeah, so we've got ideas around how we could do that to increase or enhance engagement, and then eventually increase conversion for people using an SOA and implementing yep. its recommendations. So. Um, you know, we're lo- looking forward to sort of bringing that out early in the new year, but that's really exciting because it it, it means you you still we'll we'll still have, we'll still have the document style SOA, and for us that's you know eight nine pages right um, at yeah. max three three pages which awesome. is, which is the actual yeah. SOA, <laughs> but it will be supported quite heavily by um, a more interactive way of um, accessing an SOA. That's exciting, right? And I think yeah. that'll appeal to all demographics. Yeah, it opens up so many opportunities. So whether that's your sort of GPS or money GPS coaches being able to explain concepts better or confirm understanding or even, you know, the practices being able to use that as well and turn that into a, you know, video style SOA or whatever they want to do. George, thank you so much for your time, mate. What can Pleasure. what can listeners do if they want to learn more about the platform? Uh, well, they can they can do a couple of things. They can jump onto the Money GPS website. So it's moneygps.com.au. Nothing, nothing too exciting, but that's that's the the website address. They can call one three hundred twenty four twenty four and forty two, which is the concierge service. So you can speak to a human. They can take you through the process. They'll give you an online meeting, and they can call me if they want to. Um, <laughs> You know, 0410590526. I'm happy to take the call. <laughs> I'd encourage them to at least have a look. And I, and what we do, Patrick, is if someone does want to have a chat to us and they spend a bit of time with us, um, we're quite happy to give them access to the platform so they can play with it. You know, awesome. They, they, they can get to know it. They can look at the advice topics, the reports, and uh, get to understand the platform. Happy to do that. Brilliant. George, probably the most relaxed RM I've ever met. Thank you so much for, <laughs> for your time and Thank congratulations you. on a great product. Thanks very much, Patrick. Pleasure to be here. Thank you.